Hello class, my name is Roberto and I chose Genetic Engineering Foods. So artificial selection, also known as selective breeding of organisms through biochemical process gets rid of unstable qualities. In this slide, I show a brief timeline of the history of selective breeding in agriculture. The process of genetic engineering of agricultural products begins by researching which organisms contain the genetic desirable trait, followed by complex processes which locate the gene with the desired trait and then copy it and insert the gene into the DNA of the plant to be worked with. After running several field tests, the genetically modified organism goes through a profound review with tests to measure the safety of the new product. The tool used to edit genes is better known as CRISPR-Cas9, which allows the removal, addition, or alteration of sections of a DNA sequence. In the United States, much of the soybean, corn, and canola crop is genetically modified. Scientists have the possibility of extracting a gene that produces a chemical with antifreeze properties from a fish that lives in an Antarctic region, such as flounder. They could then splice that gene into a completely distinct species, such as tomato, to make it frost resistant, which will enable farms to grow that crop year round. With the issue of global warming extending into the future, we cannot allow species to die easily. It is up to us in the progress of science and technology to explore the important qualities or characteristics which allow certain species to thrive under harsh conditions, such as warm weather, or the ability to survive to an increasing number of predators, an example of corn, being insects, before we start to lose the preciousness of such organisms. As scientists continue to work on improving life quality in various sectors of our lives, such as medicine, consumables, biodegradable products, and application of recent technologies, some people still doubt or associate genetic modifications as a risk to our long-term health. The evidence they offer is still small and inconsistent, so more research is necessary. The length of time of research and development takes about a little more than 10 years to be approved and listed in the market. According to the website GMO Answers, which state in their homepage that information from more than 200 experts, 200 experts, including academic institutions, experts from different industry groups, it takes on average 13 years for GMOs and $130 million of research and development before rising to the public market. The regulatory process alone can take five to seven years. In the article, case studies on genetically modified organisms, potential risk scenarios and associated health risk by Barbara de Santis, some data from a European Union scientific project named Marlin, which monitor, monitor the health impacts of animal feeds, in particular those containing genetic modified ingredients, ingredients on livestock animals, states that there are no case reports of allergic reactions or immunotoxic effects resulting from genetic modified feed consumption as compared with non-GM feed. The likelihood of a horizontal gene transfer of GMO-related DNA to different species is not different from that for other DNA and is unlikely to raise health concerns. It has been around 25 years since the earliest GMOs were marketed. Consumption has not led to health complications, health complications so far. However, more scientific research needs to be done. The problem with public perception and acceptance of genetic engineering of crops or food is the lack of education in biotechnology and genomics or clear public information made available by companies or laboratories to inform people of the risk, if any, benefits, requirements for growth and cost analysis of modifying crops long term. American authors have estimated that in the period of 1996 to 2011, the adoption of genetic engineered herbicide tolerant and insect resistant corn caused a reduction in the volume of active ingredients of herbicides and insecticides of 10.1% and 45.2% respectively. It is important to note that different vegetables or crops are experimented with a variety of different chemicals which might produce some level of toxicity in the body. Results provided robust, robust evidence that genetic engineered corn performed better than the natural, natural corn. Green yield was 5.6 to 24.5% higher with lower concentrations of mycotoxins and pomonisin. As with every major technological invention, markets tend to be disrupted. New regulations, laws, and ethics will now, be begin, will now begin to be challenged. Biodiversity competition will now move to laboratories, and introduction of artificial hybrids is on the rise. As always, doing more research and experimentation is necessary for validating results. Thank you.